Welcome to another Electronics on the Floor, or more possibly Electronics on the Street, because that's where you're likely to find lots of old computers. They're useful with parts suitable for the radio and electronics enthusiast. To start, you'll need a couple of screwdrivers, both Phillips and flat blade. Also, wire cutters and long nose pliers. The first thing you've got to do is get the box open. Some cases have a quick release thing where you push a couple of buttons and if you leverage in the right way, you'll get the thing open. Usually, when you look around the edge of the case, you'll find some Phillips head screws. Undo them and then remove the lid or panels from the case. Then we'll have a look inside. Already, we've seen that although this is a plastic case, the inside of the lid has a metal lining. The metal could be salvaged for, say, RF shielding, or even to bend up into small boxes. Let's have a closer look at the innards of this and see what else we can salvage. I've already partially disassembled this unit before deciding to make the video. Luckily, it's pretty easy. A lot of the boards have wires and plugs, so you can just pull out the plugs without cutting too many wires. The items we see here is the disk drive, the floppy disk drive, and I can see an LED poking out, a little three millimeter green LED. Looks like an RF choke, a few surface mount components if you're into those. But overall, probably not much else, unless you're into electromechanical stuff like motors and things. You might find something useful in this. Here we have the CD player machine. Um, there's a plug that goes into it, which is here, so make sure that you salvage that. Or you might want to keep it attached to the power supply. Looking at the output voltages, it can give you... You've got a mix of 5 and 12 volts. Now there's the hard disk speaker. This would be absolutely ideal for a small QRP rig. It's got mounting holes. It's not very high. It's an oval speaker. So if you've got a small box and you can't quite fit in a 2 inch or 5 centimeter speaker, then something like this might just fit. So this is definitely a keeper and alone makes it worthwhile grabbing this box from the street. Some of these things just slide apart easily if you know where to slide them, but otherwise they can be a bit of a pain. And also with plugs, um, it's often not a matter of just yanking them out and hoping that they do follow, but you might have to press a tab down to free them like I've done here. The key is if you can access a screw, undo it, you never know what will be able to come off. Yep. Looks like a nice bit of cable. Don't know if it's shielded cable. We'll remove the heat shrink and find out. Um, shielded cable in small lengths could be useful if you are connecting circuit boards to volume controls, particularly in direct conversion receivers where the audio amplifier has a lot of gain and you really need shielded lead to prevent harm pickup. The case itself, it's a little bit big for the average QRP project, but there are some cases, for instance, if you're building a multi-band transceiver for use at home, where it could be suitable. And with plenty of room, you can add any modifications, additions or features you want and not have to fear running out of space. Now, having a look at the inside of the lid, which is lined with metal, like this looks pretty firmly on. It's held by what looks like a rivet, but it's plastic. It doesn't quite have the springiness of brass, but this material is quite serviceable as a Morse key if you had a block of wood or similar and an electrical contact in the middle this springy type of metal could form the basis of an iambic key. Another thing I can think of um, could be a use for them is if you're making boxes out of printed circuit board material and you wanted to 
have nice corners on them, then you could use this bit of metal to finish off the corners. We've also got this plastic case. It's not all that strong, but you might have a use for it. If you had a box that had one open area that you need to cover with a nice front panel that conceals some of the screws and things, you could just put that over it. This bit could be used as a speaker grill and looks quite classy. Then there's these multi-cables. You could just strip off various strands of the wire for hookup cable for the interior of projects. Just inside this disk drive are a couple of ferrite beads, which are always useful in RF applications. This disk drive has a nice RF choke, 27 microhenries according to the colour code. I don't know about you, but although I might tolerate throwing away a board with resistors and things, I will not tolerate throwing away things with uniquely RF components. Things like crystals, ceramic resonators, trimmer capacitors, RF chokes, they're all a bit more expensive than resistors and if you're trying to build an RF project they're also indispensable. Inside this motor is lots of thin enameled copper wire. Again a scarce commodity in small quantities and useful if you don't have other transformers to get it from. A disk drive box like this could form the basis of a case, particularly for the many cheap short form kits that don't come with an enclosure. Just having a look at the board, there's a few little surface mount components. Um, for just about all the parts that you see here, you'd probably leave them on the board. I think that's the best way of storing salvaged components and only take them off when you need to use them. Um, this looks like a piezo sounder or similar. Um, memory crystal stands out 14.31. Most likely 14.318. Um, that, of course, is in the amateur band in 20 meters. Or if you want to have an IC divider, you can drop that down to 7.16. Or even divide it by 4 to 3.58. Um, that's particularly useful if you're building some of those IQ software defined radios, need a local oscillator four times the received frequency. So this little crystal would be okay for a software defined radio that covers a section of 80 meters. There's something about crystals, I absolutely hate throwing them out no matter what frequency, I'll always keep them because crystal oscillator, really simple, really elegant, um, you're not messing around with programming a DDS or something like that and if you happen to want that frequency then it's a real godsend to have a crystal in your junk box. So never throw away a crystal. Um, surprisingly in this machine there aren't any crystal oscillator modules. Very often in a computer you'll find at least two or three oscillator modules. This must be a very simple design but you might actually see them in other accessories like disk drives etc. We've got ourselves a great little fan. Could be handy to augment some heat sinking in a transceiver. If your heat sink is a little bit too small it overheats a bit then if you put a fan like this near it then you'll get better air circulation your rig will run cooler and it will be more reliable. I'm not going to open up the power supply but you'll find various capacitors, inductors, um, you might even find some switching transistors. Um, on the inductors they are of uncertain material so I'm not sure how they'll go for RF applications like balance etc. They may be a bit chancy but what you can do is you can salvage the wire from them and in small lengths they are good for various QRP stages, antenna couplers etc. Where you need a few centimetres of wire to wrap around the toid then you might be able to salvage something. It's a handy little switch, presumably like an interlock switch where the computer won't operate if the lid is off. Here's another gem, a 4 MHz ceramic resonator found in this floppy disk drive. If you're in North America, a ceramic resonator like this can be put into a VXO circuit and pulled down to maybe 3.9 MHz. That will allow coverage of the top end of the 80 m band. Useful for a homebrew, AM, double sideband or phasing SSB transmitter. This looks interesting, reminiscent of a slide rule dial in a radio. It may be possible to alter this mechanism which came from a disk drive 
to form the basis of a permeability tuned VFO. You'll just need to put in your sliding ferrite and a coil former here and as you move the ferrite in towards the coil former the frequency changes. Coupling the tuning knob to the thread you see near my thumb might provide some vernier tuning action. Once you've done all your salvaging, separate the stuff into two piles. The hopefully smaller pile that you're keeping and all the other stuff that can be discarded. I hope this video has given a fresh insight into the useful components available from a humble discarded computer. If you're looking for project ideas to make use of all your salvage components, why not have a look at Minimum QRP? It's a Kindle ebook available for under $5 US. It's not a technical book as such, but it contains lots of ideas for the sort of rig you can build and get success on the air. That's Minimum QRP. Search for it in Amazon or visit vk3ye.com.